Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Dr. Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new Team Therapy. He's the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. His latest book, Feeling Great, contains powerful new techniques that make rapid recovery possible for many people struggling with depression and anxiety. Dr. Burns is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. <laughs> that was supposed to be second. Ten seconds of silence, folks. <laughs> Hello. What's your name? <laughs> hello, David, and hello to Matt May, who is our esteemed guest today, and welcome to all of our listeners around the country and around the world and in the galaxy on your little spaceships. <laughs> this is the Feeling Good Podcast, episode 364, and because Matt May is here, people know that this is going to be an Ask David episode. Hi, Matt. Hey, Rhonda. So good to be with you again. So great to see you, David. Oh, it's great to see you. I was just um, talking about, by the way, this uh, project coming up for the Feeling Good app group called uh, Feeling Good Live. And we just hired this amazing person, Stephanie Haber, who was responsible for the Netflix Award, Emmy Award winning series Love on the Spectrum. Ooh. And she's working with us full time now. <laughs> well, that's good because we are all on the spectrum. Yeah, that's so right. We'll fit right in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So she, she joined us yesterday, and then I was talking to her for the first time today about we want to film actual live work sessions. Oh, how exciting. Hour sessions, and then turn them into uh, actually edited video kind of content programs that will be published on YouTube and, and TikTok and all the different media things. And I was telling her how when I work with people, I like to do co-therapy and that you two and Jill and also Mike Christianson are people that I love doing co-therapy work. And I consider you among the great therapist on the surface of the earth yay and, but she was really nice and um we 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 already have our first segment uh, i don't know if you were in the tuesday group when we worked with uh, indrani and the mother daughter conflict and we're going to improve the video a lot we'll be shooting it other than through zoom we're about she's she, she's going to figure out how to do that but that was such a moving episode i think we're going to use it and anyway, but that's that's good news. So we might have some other cool chances to uh, to work together and blow some minds and inspire some people. Oh, that is thrilling to me. I'm so excited, David, and and uh, look look forward to participating in whatever way you'd like there is a good oh, oh no i was just mentioning that you would, you <laughs> guys would, be someone who would enjoy watching <laughs> oh well i'll, I'll tune in I'll, I'll, I'll definitely tune in <laughs> yeah and uh i i talk about uh our, our session with uh with marilyn coffee all the time too uh i was doing a podcast with this fellow spencer greenberg on saturday and and got into some kind of tearful talk about our our, our late beloved Marilyn and kind of how, how the therapy works out. So, you know, when you have a great session like that, I, I don't think you ever forget it. No. no, those were beautiful sessions with Marilyn. Wonderful Marilyn. Yeah. Yes. They yes. Were. So I was well, talking enough, to her earlier today. On your, on your slog? <laughs> yeah. On, on my slog. I, I talked <laughs> to her and Obi mm -hmm. and happy and popcorn and, the various yeah, people you're busy. and animals we've we've lost going all the way back to my freckles it was my dog when I was a little boy. Wow. Oh, that's but wonderful. He's still, David. he's still alive. He's 
Yeah, he's alive in your memory. He's he's eighty six now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a ripe old age for a dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All okay, right, well, let's let me dive, let me jump. Let me read a po- uh, podcast endorsement and then start with our first question, which Thank is you. David sure. is going to ask the question. But here, somebody wrote about um, podcast episode four that you did with Fabrice Nye and. Um, it was that is on agenda setting part one, the eight most common forms of therapeutic resistance, which actually is oh. something we're going to talk about in our Tuesday group today. Yeah. <clears throat> and he wrote, Roy wrote, Dr. Burns, I truly appreciate your vignettes. They really help with understanding the basics of the lesson. I'm not a therapist and I need to spend considerable time to ponder my different resistances and how to create change. I would say that the first four lessons have helped raise my self esteem. Thank you, Roy. And self-esteem is something else we're talking about today. So this is a poignant, timely endorsement. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Roy. I really appreciate it. And I think Roy sent another email, maybe maybe even today or yesterday, that I might have sent to you also, Rhonda. So we might read another cool comment from Roy. Okay. But I appreciate that when people listen to podcasts, think about them, and then let us know what what you thought and uh most of our email nearly all of it is wonderfully positive like yours and occasionally uh, we 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 get dinged not not very often but but sometimes we do and sometimes the dings are genuine and we learn from them and sometimes the dings we're aware of you dingers are fraudulent mm. and we've figured that out too but interesting the dark side of human nature as well as the beautiful bright side of human nature fraudulent dings yeah yeah people who are uh have an intention of making trouble and there's a way there's a we i won't reveal our secret but we there's a simple way to find out if they're for real or not but they're they're usually uh way off way off base like someone sent we had that re- recent one on all the the free things on the website and the free groups free courses that are being and offered. groups mm-hmm. yeah and that, that but we're trying to get as much for free as possible and then some jerkoid individual i won't say a jerk because jerks don't exist but some people do try hard and come close congrats by the way folks if you're listening (laughs) (laughs) but but mention that uh, the the only motive behind all that you know that podcast on on free groups was david's uh, grubby you know money making motives so hmm. don't, don't pay attention to all these lies, folks. That that's it was something like that, and it, it was it, it was kind of uh, eccentric, to, to, to be honest. But yes, I am, especially from free therapy. That I make tons <laughs> of money from that, and free teaching and free stuff on the website. It's just uh, you know I get sick of having to go to the bank every day to deposit all this dough <laughs> from the free work that you're offering. Yeah, yeah, and so. If you think I'm a money grubby, narcissistic, horrible human being, I just plead guilty as accused and enjoying every moment of it. Keep up the adulation. (laughs) Okay, David, you're going to ask the first question. Okay. Well, this is from someone with the same name as as my own, but I could see. David Burns? Well, he just calls himself David, but (laughs) I, I, I can see, you know, from the. Uh, ridiculous nature of of the question that is someone who, who doesn't have a brain on his head but this this David <laughs> whoever he is is asking the question what's the difference a between self confidence self esteem and self acceptance mm-hmm. and before you brilliant folks answer that we can give our listeners a chance to jot down an idea or two uh, maybe just turn off the podcast for a moment and see what what's self confidence and self esteem. What's the difference? What do these terms mean? And then the big buzzword these days is self acceptance, the answer to everything, according to many additional jerkoids. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what is self acceptance? Uh, these are all three important co- concepts. 
Do you okay. want to go first, like self-esteem, self-confidence, self-acceptance? Well, I'll do self-esteem and, and self-confidence to get the ball rolling. All right. Because that, that one is pretty easy for me. And I've, I, I, I wrote about this one in Feeling Good years ago, and my thinking hasn't changed. But self-confidence is a good feeling you have because you really – kind of know what you're doing and you're you know you're going to do a decent job like before today's podcast i had and still have a lot of self-confidence because of my fantastic colleagues and i know that every time the three of us get together to record podcasts we have a lot of fun and we get a lot of wonderful feedback from from people we're natural we're spontaneous and it's and just really cool hmm. And so we we usually do a good job and get a get a great rating. Uh, now self esteem is a little different. Self esteem is the decision to love yourself and support yourself, whether you win or lose. So that's that's the difference. Self confidence is all about winning, and self esteem is all about. Lo lo loving yourself and, and sometimes you have to love yourself even more when you lose people don't need a lot of self-love when you win because everyone feels great when you win but self-esteem that's that's <clears throat> the secret of, of you loving think, yourself when you lose do you think that self-respect fits in with self-esteem well i'm going to add that to my list here uh we'll have four concepts and but there is a great answer to the, to your question, uh, and it's it's pretty fantastically illuminating. <laughs> and one of my colleagues, Matt or Rhonda, will answer that. What's the difference between self-respect and self-esteem? Well, I think of self-esteem as, like you said, is that you love yourself, whether you win or lose. You have confidence in yourself, and self-respect is when you. Um, you know, believe that what you're actually doing fits in with your values. Mm -hmm. I love that. I I respect you, <laughs> and I esteem you, <laughs> and I love you, <laughs> and I accept you. <laughs> what do you think, Matt? Oh, I I'm very interested in the conversation. I I let's see. Um, I. I guess I think of self-confidence in the same way, the idea that I, I believe in my ability to do something mm -hmm. and self-esteem. I think of more as like an assignment of almost like worth, like I'm worthwhile. Um, that, that could be a different definition. No, that's good. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, and I see both of those as somewhat problematic as some kind of like double-edged swords <laughs> at some level. Um, yeah. And right. yeah, I, cool. I need to yeah, we could we could keep keep the conversation going there. Th those are some of my initial thoughts. Can I take a stab at self acceptance? Oh yes. Where are you gonna stab it? <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that I mean there's a Buddhist quality to it too, but yes. um, isn't Definitely. there isn't that like the state of that you completely accept yourself warts and all without any qualifications, without any conditions or exceptions? It's You just accept yourself as mediocre as you are. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where that's like the death of the of the self. The Buddha called it the great self and the great death is the great rebirth and and and, and self-acceptance is just accepting the fact that uh, the whole lot of you is is kind of mediocre and below average and flawed and screwed up instead of making a federal case out of it you you accept your yourself and and the world around you and that that's the thing that i've learned from from my cats because mm -hmm. they're not uh, anything special but they have a lot of love in their hearts and hanging out with them is a pretty amazing uh, experience and and it doesn't have to do with winning cat shows or being special in any way it's just uh experiencing the joy of being alive and like being with you two people gives me joy even though you're 
both so mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the, the most uh, sincere praise I've ever received. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I think we're doing great on these on these terms. My self acceptance versus self confidence thing was after the the day that feeling good was published. It, I, I, busted my balls trying to get that book published and it was very difficult uh and nobody wanted to even reject it the publishers were so uninterested so when i finally got it published by william morrow and company it was thrilling i thought man i've got it made now and then the day it was published my editor the late but wonderful maria guarnaschelli called and said that we've sent your book to I think 12 different magazines for, for serial rights. That was a way of getting some attention. One of them would buy the chance to publish a chapter like in Self Magazine or whatever, <laughs> Ladies Home Journal. And she said they all rejected your book. And in addition, our, the president of our company decided that your book has no commercial potential and oh, put it on the top of our loser list. Are you that, making this up? No, this is true. And 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 that that means that they'll our company will invest no money whatsoever in marketing or promoting your book. So you're going oh to have to do it yourself. And I said, but I don't know how to do that. I've never done any marketing or and she said well you have to try to figure it out i said well what what am i supposed to do she says well here's the the names and phone numbers of the people at the 12 magazines who rejected your books your book so call them up and persuade them to 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 to, to change their mind <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought oh, god how am i going to do that so i called up and i was very sincere and serious and this is dr david burns i'm the author of the book feeling good and i understand that that you you recently rejected it for for serial rights but i i, I want to see if i can persuade you to to change your mind and that and, that was my plan and I had all, all of did these they hung up on you well, what happened? I, I would get like a receptionist and explain this, and then they then they would say something like, "We consider this a form of phone harassment. <laughs> Authors are not supposed to be contacting <laughs> the editors. Please don't ever contact us again." And then oh hanging up. That happened twelve times in a row. Mm. And so, when I was going home, I, I was thinking, "You're a loser." So I shouted out, no, you're going to be a winner like that. <laughs> it's real loud. I, it was like a shame attacking exercise while I was jogging. And I didn't believe it, but I thought this is a good idea. And then when I got home, I told Melanie, I think we have to go out to a fancy uh, restaurant tonight and celebrate. And she said, why is that? I said, because my book has been rejected by every magazine and the publisher won't invest in it in marketing. And she said, well, then what would, what would we have to celebrate? And I said, well, we'll just celebrate life. Anyone can celebrate when they win, but you, it's much more meaningful if you celebrate when you lose. And uh, so we went out for a fancy dinner. And over time, you know, I was able to turn it around. But that would be an act of, of self-esteem. So how did we do on this question? I, lo I love that answer, David. I do, too. Yeah, and I like yeah. that illustr that that example. But I thought it was a, a really good and important question that a lot of people I was telling Teresa Abram, one of the wonderful people on the on the app team, about the difference between self esteem and, and uh self confidence. And she said, Oh, that makes me tingly. That's so exciting. <laughs> I never understood that before. Uh and uh it's 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 really neat because the the way you compensate for those to you know, a lack of self confidence or a lack of self esteem is those are radically different uh, strategies. Mm. Nice. I have a, I have a couple of other thoughts on it that I, I great just, just in terms of um, so if we're defining self confidence as a belief in your ability to do something, yeah. Uh, I think the risk there is that there's some there's some fortune telling. Yeah, and, and potentially some all or nothing thinking where you yeah. get get in trouble, like thinking, "Oh, I can do anything." Like I can. Oh yeah. Perform that's heart, that's heart surgery. Motivational, or... sp motivational speakers uh, uh, claim. You know, you, you can do anything. anything yourself. You can, you yeah. can do anything. In fact, there was a guy in uh, in Los Alto in Los Altos who stabbed a man in the chest <laughs> in downtown. 
on the sidewalk. And when the police, you know, arrested him immediately and said, why did you do that? And he said, well, I went to a Tony Robbins motivational <laughs> speech. And he said, I can do anything. So I thought I'm going to start with heart surgery. Oh my, is that a true story? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I like it anyway. Um, <laughs> but Matt, before you go on, can I can I get you yeah. to be more specific? What if it's self confidence is the belief in your ability to do something very specific, not just your belief in the ability to do anything and everything in the world, but let's sure. say your ability yeah. to make chocolate mousse, or your ability to run a mile in ten minutes. <laughs> which... Yeah, I think I think that may be better than believing you can't do it or feeling hopeless. Uh, I also think it's an unnecessary mindset to believe that you can, like, I fail at easy stuff all the time. Yeah, me too. And I don't want to build up some expectation about the future that could be a letdown for me. I just mm. sort of would rather treat it as an experiment. I don't know what will happen if I try to make moose or uh, tie my shoes even. I I could trip and fall in the process. Um, and so That's I, right. And that, that way you can get to enjoy really simple things. Right. Yeah, like I sat down to take a poop, and it went really easily. And Successfully. I thought, that's that's great today. <laughs> yeah. Mission accomplished. Yeah, Mission maybe accomplished. I can do it again tomorrow. <laughs> so then, do we need to wipe self confidence off? Or... No, you have to wipe your butt, not the self confidence. <laughs> uh, I don't think we need to wipe ourselves clean of self-confidence that's is not, that's probably not what you're saying Matt like when you work with someone you're probably confident that you can do a, a you know a decent job for that person not always but usually I'm e eager to and, and want to yeah yeah and and uh, hope to yeah and we'll do my best but I don't and, know I don't know what will happen it's like that serial killer you were trying to treat <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was, uh, I think he stabbed someone in the chest recently. Oh, yeah, that was the same guy, yeah. The same guy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks. What, what else? You said uh, self-esteem can be a trap, too. Uh, if it's based on some sense of worth, that I, then I think it can be like a hamster wheel where we've got to earn our worth and oh, yeah. prove yeah. ourselves. And, and also, well, if I'm worthwhile, what about other people? Yeah, yeah, that's are, right. Are, are they as worthwhile as me? Yeah, can, can yeah. lead into some kind of narcissism or something like that. Yeah, I, I, to I, I totally agree. Let, let's do a, a, a feared fantasy or externalization of voices, <laughs> uh, just okay. to show one of the techniques. And yeah. uh, you can be the negative person, and uh, I'll, I'll be the positive David, and and you can say, Dave, David, I've heard through the uh, grapevine that you're not worthwhile. Sure. Yeah. David, I'm, uh, Hey, are you David Burns? Yep. Yep. That's me. You got the guy. Yeah. Um, heard your book got rejected. Oh, from which one now? Uh, feeling good. It I, was I heard it, it rejected. What rejected. rejected by who or by what? By 12 different magazines. Oh yes. Yes, ab absolutely. It was so disappointing. It was my, my first book, but eventually I was able to turn it around, but it was, it was, uh, you know, I had to learn from the uh, school of hard knocks there. All, all my books got published immediately. But oh, fantastic. How, how did you do that? Because I've read your book and I, I, I was surprised that they were published at all. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's due to my, <laughs> it's just due to my high levels of worth. I, I'm an extremely worthwhile person. Oh, that's great. Were you born that way or did you learn that somewhere along the, along the, the, road, the road of life? I was just born with amazing levels of worth. Oh, fantastic! How do, who told you that? Was that your mom? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she she likes my haircut too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what's the point? There is a, well, a lot of points. We don't have to be that concerned about our worth, maybe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What What are you going to buy with your worth? Well, because what you said, Matt, is true. We all were born with worth. Yeah. You know, we're we're born. Yeah, all, all no, human, all human, human beings. beings right? And there's nothing yeah. that we have to prove. Or we don't, nobody has worth and that's okay too. Yeah, that's my point of view. Like the, I'm not for sale even. And yeah. I don't want to have worth because then 
you're not for sale. Let's let's I'm, not get too extremist here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, suppose everyone has their price. But uh, anyway, we're we're joking around, but we're we're, we're really hopeful that uh, the talking about these concepts will will be helpful to you. And and just to make it simple and direct and not and not humorous, you know, worrying about wor- worthwhileness is just kind of a, a a trap that robs you from from life and from whatever's going on at the time. We're not trying to be worthwhile, but it's fun to enjoy each other and, and also to to have the idea that maybe we can bring some humor and some uh, understanding of basic concepts to our listeners and and that they'll some of you who are listening might might enjoy or appreciate this and 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 find it's it, it's useful to you and to clarify your thinking about certain things having to do with the the, the way you feel and your level of happiness and that type of thing. Yeah, especially people who are perfectionists or have an achievement addiction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Shall I, I only, read then? Oh, I only have I only have one objection to self acceptance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what would that be? Well, this may <laughs> sound a little bit strange, but it, it's there's still a focus on the self, and I think that deprives us of seeing the beauty in the universe, world, and other other people around us. Yeah, say that again. So, because that, that was good. Yeah, I want to write that down. Oh, okay. Um, well, in general, I like self-acceptance a lot more than self-esteem or, or self-confidence because it's seeing both sides of the picture. It's seeing that we have flaws and failings and and we can uh, really see those without running away. Um, and so we're living more in reality. I think that's better. I think all forms of self-delusion are a trap. Um, mm. But the there's still a problem with self-acceptance, which is that the focus is still on the self and that there's an additional step after that, which is just to let go of that focus on the self uh, so that we can see the beauty in everyone else and the universe around us. Yeah. Yeah. If you go around pounding on your chest, bragging about how much you accept yourself in spite of how screwed up you are, you're still kind of in a narcissistic trap. Yeah. Yeah. Looking in the mirror rather than through the window. Yeah. Mm, well, that's oh my gosh. Cool I love that. Yeah. The mirror versus the window. That could be the title of this podcast. <laughs> I think I'm stealing that from one of my patients, actually. Oh, well, it'll be, be, be even more, more effective then. <laughs> okay, Check Great. Your copyright Thank out. you. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're, what's the next? Okay. Uh, the next question? one is from Guillermo who asked, how do you help people who don't know that they need help with depression? Hello, Dr. Burns. I was curious as to how you would help someone who is not aware or is not capable to know, but not in a medical sense, um, that they need help. You said before that the worst thing you can do is to try to help, especially when no one has asked for help. But how have you handled in the past cases when someone isn't aware that they need help for depression? It seems like it would be a very tough, very tough without the person being motivated. As always, thank you for all you do. Um, yeah, well, that that's a wonderful question, Guillermo. By the way, what uh, what what do you remember? Podcast, the number of our podcasts could we share it of on uh, wh- wh- how to help or when to when yeah, to help? Yeah, I can or, I can find it while we're you and Matt. Why don't you and Matt have a chat while yeah. I can find it? You you take we'll give you first shot at this one. How do you, you know would help someone who isn't aware for? or capable of knowing, uh, but not in a medical sense, that they need help. Uh, You've said before, the worst thing you can do is to try to help, especially when no one asks for help or when the person hasn't asked for help. But how have you handled in the past cases where someone isn't aware that they need help for, 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 for depression? So your floor is yours. Yeah, and you could you could put a lot of other problems into that space of depression, right? Like su- substance abuse or um, anxiety. Mm, sure. Uh, uh, Relationship problems. Yeah, um, anorexia. Yeah, I think it's it's um, you know if if you enter into that conversation trying to help someone, you'll create the resistance. To, to receive right. that that help, right? And, and so instead of uh, being in that kind of gear, I, um, I think 
think it's better to be in more of the empathy gear of just listening and trying to understand and, and create a real connection and warmth and closeness with anyone and understand that they may never want that help or never uh, re reach out for any help, but it's not your job to do that. And um, in the five, but the five secrets are just awesome at connecting with people and, and you can express some of the feelings. I think Guillermo's writing in because he's seeing someone suffer, um, doesn't cares about them, loves them and doesn't want them to continue to suffer. And he might be feeling kind of hopeless and, stuck and upset uh, that he can't help help them yeah yeah that's a beautiful answer so you can be using uh the, the disarming technique thought and feeling empathy uh, inquiry i, I feel, feel statements, statements. Uh -huh. and, and and stroking you can do do all of those things and if you do them well you're refusing to help and that's almost always helpful and when you try to help, it's almost never helpful. Now, in a team therapy session, T-E-A-M, we uh, don't even offer help until we get an A or an A-plus on empathy using that what's my grade technique. So we'll, uh, and I'm sure you folks do the same, when someone is talking about a problem in their life, a problem with their son or daughter or whatever it happens to be, their self-esteem, we just uh, s stick with paraphrasing what they're saying, finding truth in it, uh, asking questions, uh, sh sharing f feelings of sadness so they'll feel accepted and understood. Those are the goals, not helping them. Then once then we say now, last you know, 25 minutes here, we've taught, you've done a great job of uh, telling me about some really heartbreaking things going on in your life. Uh, and I'd like to know what, what, how would you grade me on, on, on my empathy and, and, and listening? Uh, and, and you can grade me with three things in mind. Do I understand how you're thinking? Do I understand how you're feeling inside? And do I and, and and do you have a sense of acceptance or warmth or, or or respect as we've been talking? And then if they give you an A or an A plus, then you can do what's called the invitation step, and that's where you then ask the person, you know, is there something here that you'd like to work on tonight? Uh, something that you'd like some help with, or or do you? need to talk some more and uh, have me try to be a continue to be a good listener because that's important too and i don't want to short circuit that and i think this is a, essentially a you know a perfect way to an, an answer that 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 question but you can do these things most effectively when you've when you're coming from a point of humility uh, and and accepting the fact that this person might not want my help. And if you find that threatening or upsetting, then you need to do your own daily mood log and find out why you're 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 being so so pushy and and feeling this incredible compulsion to be superior to the other person or to 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 throw help at them or to to gratify your own ego by having them do the thing you want them to do i maybe i'm being too too harsh with with these words but that that's that's kind of my my thinking i like that david i i think a couple of follow up points there is that it can be hard to believe that a sincere effort to help someone would be a problem or, or could create resistance and it might be worth just spelling out like why that happens like what your 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 uh, loudness is fading in and out here mm -mm. Uh -oh. uh, not to me not in my ears okay all right <clears throat> i i moved my microphone a little closer to my mouth so yeah that's mm -hmm. good is that better okay yeah it's when you rotate your head 360 degrees, <laughs> <laughs> like in the movie The Exorcist. <laughs> yeah, I've been feeling quite possessed recently. Um, <laughs> I guess so. I, I would be interested, David, to hear your thoughts on what. Why do people resist when you try to offer them help? 
So it seems like a sincere thing from the vantage point of the helper. So why do people push back when, when we're just trying to offer them some help? Well, there's a fantastic uh, <laughs> answer to that that Rhonda will now provide. Because it can be kind of condescending. Right. It could be like you're telling me that you know more about my life than I do. And you're, it could be that you're, you're pushing me to do something that I don't want to do and or that I'm not ready to do, which would only make me more upset or more angry in addition to whatever else I'm feeling and coping with. Yeah, I love that. Like you're pushing your values. You might be also pushing your values onto me. Yeah. When, when uh, we lost Obi, uh, he disappeared, as a lot of our listeners know, in the middle of the night. He, he was a feral cat, so he liked to go out hunting for two hours every night from 4 to 6 a.m. Then he'd come back and scratch on our bedroom door at 6, and we'd let him back in. And one one sad day, he we didn't hear him scratching, and we, we never found him. And I'm, mm. I'm sure he was eaten by the mountain lion behind our house or ran into some b- bad fate. And I loved him more than life itself. And I mean, he was my best friend, aside from you and Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, but really, I just, I, I loved him and he loved me. Uh, and uh, it was quite a loss. And when I was talking about that in the, in the Tuesday group, this intrusive woman, and I apologize for saying that about her, but she was very intrusive, always telling people what to do and, oh, I can help you with that and here's what you should do. And and she said, oh, you know, you, you shouldn't be upset. You can go to the pound and, and get another kitten and love that kitten and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and and I, I, I snapped at her. What I really intended to say was shut the F up. <laughs> and uh, I, I was almost that harsh. Mm-hmm. I, I toned it down slightly because I wanted to be sad. Mm-hmm. I loved Obi. I didn't want someone telling me, don't be sad. Right. Who Who the hell are you to understand my relationship with, with Obi? And why are you so afraid of tears or love or caring or loss? Um that so that that would be that would be another example. You're kind of imposing your values on on someone else, but it's disrespectful because you're pushing help on someone who isn't asking for help. It's the same, it's the same uh, thing. If you go to a used car salesman, you're walking through the lot, and then they they try pushing this and that car on you and and you you know that they just have their own self-interest at heart and they're not really trying to help you they're just trying to make a profit and imposing help on people who are asking for help is every bit as obnoxious to to my way of thinking yeah, but i forgive you all of you compulsive helpers out there who probably don't even recognize that you're a compulsive helper i do forgive you because Early in my career, I was trained only to help people. So I was kind of in that trap myself until I finally figured out how to how to get out of it. And what a relief it was when I no longer needed to help people. Paradoxically, I became vastly more helpful. Mm-hmm. I love, love what you're saying, David. Um, Me too. And could we also bring it to the – yeah. <laughs> um, you have good self-confidence, um, <laughs> your self-esteem, uh, how, how about like for parents who see their children going astray in different ways? It's so hard as a parent, I, I know firsthand to love your child so much and then to see them doing something dangerous or, um, you know, getting into some bad habit or, uh, that, that sort of thing. Um, that seems like a time where I would be very tempted to try to help and um, probably shoot myself in the foot there. Yeah, what a great question. Yeah, so, Rhonda has the answer. Well, I think that there's a balance with, you know, with parenting. I'm a little, and I'm a little, you know, my kids are now in their 30s. And so... Um, you know, several, you know, they had their, their challenging times when they were teenagers and 
giving them lots of empathy for what they're going through and talking about my feelings and not making them wrong and yet setting appropriate limits so that they can't repeat oh, that's something. I think that works well together, being yeah, empathic that's right. and s- taking away their telephone or whatever the limit is <laughs> <laughs> or not letting them get their driver's license till they're 18 or, you know, whatever it is that's appropriate and doing that with love and your feeling and the five secrets. Um, yeah, I love that. Uh, that. That's cool, Rhonda. Like when our son was uh, doing arson and, and setting the neighbor's homes on fire. <laughs> it was, we had to set limits as well as... Yes, you had to say you cannot have any access to matches, no lighters, well, get not, away from the fireplace. Not more than one house per week, right? Right. Now, there are there are cases where you have to help people against their will. Uh, and uh, that's when it's a, a life-threatening kind of emergency. So uh, if you're working with someone with anorexia nervosa who's hospitalized and near death uh, and and absolutely determined to keep losing weight and and not, and not eating, then the the modestly program, which I call coercive therapy, where the mom and dad sit down and force the child to eat, and the mom and dad have to work as a team, that that is can be a life-saving intervention. I've, I've explained it very briefly, and there's a little more to it than that, but the, the child will scream and complain, and, and you don't let the child move from the table until they've eaten the amount of food you want them to, to eat. Um, and so that would be an example. And then our, our buddy, Stephen Fleider, who I haven't talked to for a long time now, used to be a, a faithful member of the Tuesday group, is doing interventions up in San Francisco for people often with very hardcore uh, addictions to to opiates and cocaine and and often people whose, whose life is in danger. And then he helps uh, organize fa- family interventions and uh, works with the family uh, a- a- as well as a- as the patient to to get some hopefully life saving help for that for that individual. I mean, th- those are probably exceptions where you know if someone's living in the gutter and just asking for more money to get more heroin, you 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 might have to to resort to some more you know, uh, s- setting the rules, setting the limits, uh, and and enforcing some action that could save that person's life. And even then, the prognosis, I'm sure, is often not terribly positive. But uh, but for but for the most part, uh, you know, and I've learned from you two both about how powerful kindness and empathy can be. And we're always getting comments from our our listeners about you matt and how lacking in empathy you are (laughs) (laughs) how how kind and and compassionate you you are and you know i've learned just being around uh, the two of you and jill levitt and and others who have have beautiful uh, skills of empathy and listening and compassion how, how powerful that that alone can be w- without trying to impose your values on, on the mm-hmm. other person. And when I finally figured this out, it, it was a relief to me to have someone come to me who maybe has obsessive, what we call obsessive compulsive d- disorder, but they might not, maybe they're washing their hands 50 times a day and, uh, and, and and but they don't want help or a hoarder and they they they're not asking for help now a hoarder might get involuntary help if if their house becomes a mess and complain from the neighborhood then it becomes a legal uh, pr- problem but if someone wants psychiatric help psychological help they've got to persuade me that they want my help and uh, i i'm not going to try to to persuade them. And that that was a massive transformation in my career, 180 degree turnaround in my career when that first dawned on me. And it's made life an awful lot easier uh, ever since, because when someone starts talking really desperately to you during a therapy session, or even a friend outside of a therapy session, and you think, oh, boy, I've got to help here, it gives you a sense of panic and pressuredness. That pressure goes over to the other person, and the the result of, of that is, is generally quite negative. You know, you know Matt, 
Th- that was really brilliant, David. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And it it does Me give too. you it does give you a sense of freedom, not feeling like you have to jump yeah. in and dot and help everyone. Yeah. You know, when I said my kids were older, so that didn't make me. I I didn't want to say like oh, I I've like I'm the best parent. You know, I think if I had known the five secrets, I would have been a much better parent when my kids were teenagers. But what it did when I was in Germany in June, in the wee hours of the night when I was with my son Gabriel and the twin babies, one night he he laid out all the mistakes that his dad and I had oh, made with him. Wow. Oh my God, wow. that was such a like, why'd you do this? And did you know this? And what about this? And blah, blah, that. And I was like, oh my God. And yeah. you know, li- having the five secrets be the avenue to respond was so helpful oh, because yeah. you know I could listen without being defensive, which gave him permission to even to say whatever else was on his mind. And by the end of the con, I was like, oh my god, another thing. But <laughs> but yeah. um, but still, it was like, oh wow, I had no idea that. Go tell me more. Tell you know what yeah. else? Tell me more. Oh my gosh, I feel terrible. Just tell me more. And at the end, he was like, oh, I've wanted to have this conversation with you for years, and I felt sp- actually so much relief and so much better. Yeah, that's I think beautiful. that's beautiful. I think so too. I think that says so many good things about you, Rhonda, that you created an environment where they could talk to you in such a genuine, open way. And, oh, thank you. and that you were willing to receive that. And mm-hmm. they, they could just kind of vent and yeah. W- yeah. while you listen. But it was really yeah. the five secrets that gave me, thank you, Matt, that gave me the tools to be able to have that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, the, the you can turn. The, the, we all fail. Well, I don't. know, We all do, but th- those among us in present company probably fail quite a lot, and will always fail quite a lot. And if you can, that, this is where the self acceptance comes in. If you can accept that, w- without, you know, freaking out, mm-hmm. uh, that then then you're in a position to listen when when the other person. S- says that and you know i don't know if it did any good but yesterday uh, we we had some tension in our app group and one of the women sh- started saying how angry she was and if things didn't change she was going to quit in three weeks and she was just kind of like r- really f- fuming and 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 i you know but i didn't feel threatened by it i just told her i i so much respect what you're saying i so much respect you and i'm i'm just glad you're kind of telling us and i can see the passion behind what what you're saying i understand you now, now better and i felt a lot closer to her to to just be able to accept that uh you know accept her accept myself accept our group these things these things happen, and and if and if you accept it, you you can turn it in, into a source of power, source of of energy. Doesn't always work. She did quit. <laughs> did she really? No, <laughs> no, no. I'm just teasing. I hope she doesn't, because she she's absolutely. Uh, uh, she gives her heart to to our app, and she's fantastic. She's 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 brilliant, and but I was wanting to revise the app before we release it, and she was saying, "Let's get it out there." Uh, we're doing too many revisions. We, we don't have to be perfect. There are people who are going to be have their lives changed. I have friends. She was saying, I want them to have the chance now to get the app and 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 use it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's doing great things for many people as as it is right now. And so I I, I heard that. And uh, but, but um, I don't even know what I'm talking about now. But I'll accept that too. Except I'm <laughs> elderly and half demented. But but it was it was a kind of a joy not to react when someone's kind of sh- shouting at you and mm-hmm. and and to 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 tell her I like what you're doing, and uh, you know lean into your anger and you know it's important what you're what you're saying. I think this is a really fantastic answer to Guillermo's question of like how what do we do when we see someone who's not aware that they need help or yeah in in a bad frame of mind yeah. and it occurs to me that if you just look at that as a relationship problem yeah that, that that Guillermo has a choice to continue with the status quo in the relationship uh to take responsibility for improving the relationship or to have some sort of fallback position and um 
And I was glad that you brought up Stephen Flederer because that's when I was talking to him about his work as an interventionist, he's always talking about the the importance of getting the whole family on the same page. Yeah, right. That there's going to be, you know, a choice presented uh, to the individual. Because if there's one family member who's like, no, I'm still in the empathy phase. I still want to, you know, um, try to help help this person in some way other than to just draw a limit, as Rhonda was saying, that that actually uh, can hijack the whole uh, process of trying, yeah. to help that, trying to help that person. Good point. Yeah. And the podcast number um, is 164, and the entire topic is how to help and how not to help. Oh, yeah. How, how to help. So that's a good one to listen to also if, if you have trouble in this this area, how to help and how not to help loved ones and friends who, who are in trouble and needing, in your opinion, needing help. Great. Well, how are we doing? Should we call it a day on this? Uh... Well, maybe we should because it's almost been an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you folks think about today's podcast? Or experience it. it? Loved it. Yeah, I did me too. too. Why? Well, you and Matt are brilliant, and you add so I much. I know, I know. <laughs> you add so much. <laughs> and, and, and humble. We're and very humble. humble. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and warm. I, I thought it was and really neat because we yeah. were just being ourselves and just being human and uh, give, sharing our ideas on some really important questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I lo loved the laughs and yeah. got into some, some good, deep conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Which is always fun. Yeah. Okay, then until next time, thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye bye. bye, -bye. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, the director of the Feeling Great Therapy Center. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.